Big news, I've got a new retro gaming channel called Forever 8-Bit. It's linked in the video description and pinned comment. But hey, don't forget to watch this video first. Don't worry, I'll be waiting for you over there. If you're ready to turn your Super Nintendo Classic from ordinary into extraordinary, you're in the right place. I'm about to show you how to take your SNES Classic and transform it from the stock 21 games it came with to adding your favorite games directly to the system. Be sure to stick around for an important bonus tip at the end for adding the entire Super Nintendo library to one USB drive. Let's go! First step, from your Windows PC, download the HackGCE software from the GitHub. I've got this link for you in the video description. Scroll down on the page until you see the Assets section. Then locate the executable file for the HackGCE installer. Click on the file to download it to your Downloads folder. On your computer, locate the HackG installer EXE file and double click on it. At the UAC prompt, click on Yes to continue. To install HackG, just follow the on-screen prompts and you can use the default paths and locations for HackG. Once the installation process is complete, you'll see the Close button light up in the bottom right corner. Click it to close the HackG installer. Now you can delete the HackG installer file in order to eliminate clutter out of your downloads folder. To launch the program for the first time, click on the Windows Start icon then locate the HackG icon. In my case, I wasn't able to find it natively in the list of alphabetized listings under HackG. I had to go to the search bar and type in the name of the program in order to launch it. Just be aware that if you run into this issue, you can do that. When the program first starts, you'll see some basic instructions for how to use HackG. Click OK to continue. It's not shown here, but if you're prompted to allow access through your Windows firewall, do so. This program is perfectly safe. The next message tells you that you absolutely must use a USB micro data cable, not just a charge cable, in order for this process to work correctly. If you need one of these, I have one linked for you in the video description. When HackG first starts, you'll see it load the list of games for the console that you have pre-selected. In this case, it comes pre-selected to the NES for USA and Europe. But since this is a video about the Super Nintendo Classic, that setting just won't do. To update this, go to the top left corner and you'll see a listing for Current Games Collection. Click the drop down and you'll be presented with all of the consoles that HackG can work with. In this case, it's going to be the Super NES for USA. Locate it and click it in the drop down listing. The games list will be automatically updated inside the software. Next step, go to the menu choices across the top left of the screen. Click Kernel, then navigate down to Install slash Repair and click on it. You'll be prompted as to whether or not you want to install the custom kernel. Well, yeah, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Come down to Yes and click on it. You'll be prompted to put your Super NES Classic into FEL or recovery mode and connect it to your PC over USB. Here's how that's done. With power removed from your Super NES Classic, turn it on. Then press and hold the reset button up and continue to hold this button. Plug in the micro USB end of the data cable into the USB port on the back of the Super Nintendo Classic. Then plug the other end of the USB cable into your PC. This will transfer HackG over to your Super Nintendo Classic. You can expect your SNES Classic to be restarted several times during the process. Once everything is complete, click OK to continue. The Classic itself is now modded, and if you connect it to a TV and power it on, it will put the Super NES Classic into HackG. But you won't see anything new because we haven't put any games on there yet. Let's fix that. To install games to HackG, you're going to need ROM files in either ZIP or SFC format. In this case, these files are already uncompressed and in SFC format. And these three games, TMNT 4 Turtles in Time, Wing Commander, and Yoshi's Cookie, are not included on the original 21 games list for the console. Drag all of your ROM files and drop them directly into the games list inside HackGCE. With only a few ROMs, this just takes a few seconds. But with an entire ROM set, this can take well over an hour. One of the really cool things about HackG CE for Windows is that it will automatically scrape the box art and metadata for the ROMs you've copied in. In this case, I've copied in no intro ROMs. One of the challenges with copying more games over to the SNES Classic is that the built-in on-screen menu only supports up to 30 games at a time. To fix this, click the Structure button shown here. In the window that appears, choose Custom, Use Folders Manager. Then repeat that exact same process. Click the Structure button, and then choose Custom, Use Folders Manager from the list of choices. The Custom Folders Manager window is what allows you to choose how your folders appear and operate on the Super NES Classic menu. I recommend that you use the listing for split by first letter shown on the right side of the screen here. This will organize your folders in alphabetical order in the main menu. With your folder structure selected, come down to OK near the bottom right corner and click on it to close out the Custom Folder Manager. 
Right by where the OK button was, you'll see a message that says Synchronize Selected Games with Mini. Click on this message to continue. You'll be asked whether or not you've already installed HackCheat to your SNES Mini. In this case, you already have, so you can click Yes to continue. You'll get a new on-screen prompt instructing you to do two things. First, connect the USB-A end of your cable to your PC and the micro USB cable to the back of the SNES Classic. Then power on the system. Moving forward, anytime you go to install games to the system, you can simply do this process rather than the FEL recovery mode process. When the custom folder window appears, you can simply click OK to close it out. Underneath that, you'll see the progress of your game installation. And when you're only putting three games on here, it goes really fast. Once you've completed the game transfer to your SNES Mini, click OK. Now you can disconnect your Mini from your computer and hook it back up to your TV to see how the transfer process worked out. And sure enough, the navigation structure we set up inside the custom folder manager is now present on the SNES Classic. And so are the games. For example, inside the T folder, here's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time. Here's that bonus section I promised you. You can add several hundred games to the internal memory of your SNES Classic this way. But what if you want the entire library? Here's how that's done. You'll need a FAT32 formatted USB drive and an OTG or on-the-go adapter. This lets you hook up the USB drive in line between the power cord and the micro USB port on the back of the SNES Classic. If you need one, I've got it linked for you in the description. This time, rather than copying over just three games, I'm going to copy over the entire No Intro ROMs library with all of the ROMs in zip format. Just grab the entire ROM set and drag and drop it right onto the list of games as before. Be prepared though, because this takes about an hour in real time to transfer them all into HackGCE. Alright, you'll need to straight up be prepared to do some babysitting here. You may see notifications about patches for the games you're trying to install. If you get these notifications, you can simply click Yes to All to continue. You may also get notifications that some games won't work well with the built-in emulator, and it will ask you if you want a third-party emulator. Once again, click Yes to All. Then be prepared to hurry up and wait while your games are transferred in. Once all of your games have been transferred, insert your USB drive formatted in FAT32 into your computer. You can minimize the window for File Explorer as you won't need it. Alright, remember how we created a folder structure when you copied the games internally? You'll need to do the same thing for your USB drive. Click Structure, and then click the Custom Folder Manager. At the next pop-up window, you can just click OK as we're getting ready to organize all of your games into their own folders. When the Custom Folder Manager window appears, you'll basically just need to do the exact same thing that you did when you copied your games to internal memory. Navigate over to the right to split by first letter and click on it. You'll know things are being organized correctly when you see the list of folders here with the entire alphabet on it, plus a pound folder to catch games that don't start with a letter. With your folder structure now selected, click OK in the bottom right corner. But this time, navigate to the listing that says Export to USB and click on it. Alright, pay very close attention here. You want to make sure that these games are being copied to the correct drive. You want to make sure that you've selected your USB drive, in this case, drive G named Subscribe, so you don't forget to subscribe to the channel while you're here. Select your drive from the drop-down choices and click OK. When the Custom Folder Manager window appears, click OK to close it out. And once again, hurry up and wait while your games are copied over to your USB drive. Once that process is complete, File Explorer will come up to the main maximized window and show you a list of folders now copied over to your USB drive with the game ROMs in them. You don't have to do anything with this other than close out the File Explorer window. At this point, you're done with your PC. You can close out everything from inside HackGCE, close out any open instances of File Explorer, and remove the USB drive from your computer. Time to put that OTG adapter to use. Put the USB drive in it, plug in the power cord, and plug it all into the back of the SNES Classic. Because you're using USB storage, you can expect the language menu to appear the first time you run HackGee with USB plugged in. Select your language and then come down to OK to continue. And presto, all of the games and folders will be on the USB drive and immediately playable on your SNES Classic. But that's not the only mini console you can mod, and if you miss out on this, you're missing out on a lot. Check out this video on how to mod your NES Classic. It's shown on screen and linked in the video description and pinned comment. I'll look forward to seeing you there.